Well, it's another wild day of AI updates. Today, we've got a new fast video model, uh, maybe the fastest we've seen yet, uh, and it's cheap, but is it good? We'll find out today. Plus the return of, what well, kind of a legendary name in AI video, one that I thought was lost to time. Well, it's back as kind of the Photoshop of video. Uh, yeah, a really promising video editor you gotta check out, and it's free. Good stuff here. Plus a preview of 3D conditioned AI video. Uh, yeah, this one is really exciting. All right, let's hop in. Kicking off, we have a super fast video model that just dropped. Uh, this one is called Lucy 14B and comes to us from Descartes, who you might remember as the folks that brought us Oasis. Uh, it was kind of one of the first uh, real-time generative open world models. This one was the like the Minecraft one very early in. Well, today they've released Lucy 14B, a hyper-optimized video model. Uh, this one is image to video, uh, generating at unprecedented speeds. Yeah, they're claiming generating generations at uh, 6.26 seconds uh, compared to like VO3 fast uh, at 54 four seconds, which actually seemed high to me. So I just ran a test uh, running on a VO generation and yeah, uh, one minute, five seconds. So you know, slower than I actually thought it was. But does fast matter if it's not good or cheap? Like the old saying goes, fast, cheap, good. You can only pick two. Thus far, the only place that I've actually seen the model at work is over on fall. I'm sure that it will roll out as time goes on. Lucy is running at a cost of eight cents per second. So, uh, you know, actually fairly reasonable. Um, so loading in our image image of our uh, couple in love who have just discovered that they live in a simulation. Um, and then, yeah, giving that a run. Uh, prompt here is just man and woman talking in love, joyful. Yeah, the generation does come in pretty quickly. Uh, 12 seconds here, uh, not quite the six seconds as advertised, but still, that's pretty fast. Overall, I'd say, you know, pretty solid generation here. Uh, you know, I didn't prompt for anything crazy, so we're more or less getting what we asked for. Uh, some nice camera movement with some kind of parallaxing effects there. Um, the characters are talking like I asked, and uh, well, I mean, are they in love? Uh, that's for you to decide. I mean, I think these crazy kids are gonna make it though. We are getting a bit of morphing uh, back here in the corner, but in general, I do think that this, uh, you know, overall the video does pretty well considering that we're getting that soft background focus, um, you know, in the input image. Image, so it, it's got a lot of wiggle room here. Of course, the big thing here is that there does seem to be a lot of like chop in the frame rate there. And that is because it is well, it is outputting at 16 frames a second. Um, so actually that makes for a good use case for heading over to Topaz's Astra. Obviously we can not only upscale and enhance it, but we can actually swap out the frame rate as well. Uh, so just giving this a roll with uh, precise and uh, moving this over to quality, I'm gonna leave it at 1080 again it's coming in at 720 um and then we'll adjust the frame rate to we'll do 30 frames a second um render this out see how it looks and yeah our topaz render i mean really cleans it up a pretty considerable amount uh definitely removes all of that chop looks very smooth in terms of frame rate even did clear up a little bit of the uh, decoherence back there doesn't completely get all of it but um yeah no overall I, I mean, that looks really good. Continuing to experiment with the model. And just to note, I'm gonna leave these at you know native 16 frames per second. I'm not gonna do any enhancements to them. Um, you guys know that I've been obsessed with uh, 180 degree camera rotations recently. Um, so, you know, taking our image of Captain L'Oreal and his merry band of dark fantasy warriors, um, I issued, you know, uh, rotate the camera 180 degrees. The result actually kind of impressed me in all honesty. I mean, we don't make it around the full 100 180 degrees in the five seconds. It's more like, I don't know, 45 degrees, somewhere around there. I don't know, geometry whizzes, you guys let me know. Um, what did impress me here though, is the fact that uh, Captain Short Sword uh, over there on the edge, uh, he actually vanishes from screen for a while and then actually reappears. So the model has some level of object permanence. That's, that's pretty great. So that got me wondering how the model would handle new and novel things entering frame. Uh, so utilizing a relatively clean image like this, this is the one that we used for the Sea Dance Dream. Dream, see dream, I'm gonna punch somebody up by dance. Uh, the see dream video that we did earlier this week uh, and just at, issuing the prompt uh, for a hand to come in and take the knife out of the banana. Overall, I mean, not too shabby. Uh, hand entering frame definitely looks to scale, looks realistic, is not turning into like banana fingers as well. Um, the model is smart enough to leave kind of like that exit hole, I guess, uh, for the banana. If I'm gonna nitpick, uh, the banana maybe looks hollow, uh, but again, I'm not gonna get 
like super crazy about that. One thing that's kind of impressive is the fact that um, you can actually kind of see the banana reflection in the knife. Uh, you know, the, the drawing of the knife out might not be the most uh, realistic in terms of physics, but again, I'm not gonna get super crazy and dock it on that. Um, yeah, overall, solid. So with that established, I thought it'd be interesting to see how far we could push it in terms of stylistic consistency. Um, so grabbing this image of this orc, he's definitely the one chasing Captain L'Oreal and his band of dark uh, warriors around the forest, uh, and then giving it the prompt that the camera would crane up and we would find a knight on top of that bridge. We ended up with this, which uh, actually, I mean, it's not that bad. Yeah, it gets a little bit on the misty side, and I would say that uh, like the structure integrity of the bridge does like kind of look a little bit on the choppy side. Um, but I mean, hey, it followed instructions and it, again, stayed stylistically consistent in an area of that image that we have not seen. I do think that anytime that you're dealing with these kind of like 16 frame, lower frame rate uh, generators, really, I think the strong point here is in animation and stop motion animation. For example, weird, creepy doll images. Uh, this stuff, I think that when you run it and you know, like something like Lucy, you end up turning that choppier frame rate into an advantage of sorts, um, kind of giving it much more of a stop motion, kind of like Brothers Quay-ish kind of look. I always do find like stop motion animation type things that are moving too quickly at 24 or 30 frames a second look a bit odd to me. Like it, it actually needs like the chop. Or if you're using it for traditional animation type looks, uh, where obviously, you know, in traditional animation, there are lower frame rates because, well, you got to draw every frame. Um, to me, actually, this comes up, even with the choppiness, uh, more authentic than, you know, if you were to run this at 24 or 30 frames a second. So ultimately, is Lucy your go-to video generator? I mean, right now, uh, I mean, maybe, probably not, but considering costs are around, what, eight cents a second, uh, it's not horrible, but it does require some post-processing for sure. But if you're working on kind of an animated project or again, stop motion project, and you need to do it very quickly, uh, yeah, I would say Lucy is definitely a go-to. Moving on, Absinthe is back, and that, to quote Jean-Luc Picard, is a name I have not heard in a very long time. That was a direct quote from the extended edition of Fellowship of the Ring. So Absinthe is a name that you might recognize if you've been around the AI video scene for a while. It was actually one of the first video restylers around. Uh, actually, they've been kicking around since 2020, which I actually didn't realize. The great thing about Absinthe is that, it, well, it's always been free, although admittedly back in the day, it could take a bit of like finagling to get it to install and, and up and running. Uh, still, there were definitely some very cool projects released utilizing Absinthe. Actually, one of my favorites was this VFX test that Scott Lighthizer did, uh, got three years ago now. Uh, I mean, to me, this still holds up. This still looks really good. But as things on the video to video side, well, I mean, honestly, got a little bit warpier and morphier, uh, Ebsynth just kind of drifted away a bit until now, at least. Yeah, they're back and they've they've got actually got a brand new UI that is super smart uh, and, you know, true to the good guys they are as it's always been, it's free. So unfortunately, I'm just really getting started with this here, so I don't have time to do a full deep dive with this, but I did wanna show you uh, exactly how kind of amazing and awesome this thing is. Um, is uh, So it's a piece of stock video that I ended up grabbing. Um, we can create a new track down here. So um, those of you who have used After Effects or any kind of compositing software should be pretty at home here. Uh, and then from here, I'm just gonna drag in a pair of really stupid sunglasses uh, that I had sitting around on my desktop. Um, now, this is where things get pretty awesome. Um, I'm just gonna grab um, the generate here. And then as you can see, um, Nano Banana is actually available here. Um, so we're just gonna prompt to put the glasses on the woman, uh, hit generate. And as we can see, the banana has done its thing. Uh, but more importantly, uh, you can see uh, propagating down here. Uh, and you can see our uh, timeline actually kind of expanding out because yeah, it does video as well, which is kind of insane, right? Uh, now I will say that there is kind of some like weird warpy stuff going on here. And you can see there's a little bit of like drag and blur as she brings her cigarette across here. So for kind of longer shots, what you're gonna wanna do is come back in and like re keyframe certain areas and then like do regenerations. So that's kind of the cool thing. Again, we have keyframing across. And again, there's just a ton of other like options in here. Like we have full opacity controls uh, over layers, which is pretty great. Um, obviously we can lasso remove things. So uh, I would say that like here where, actually this is the banana's fault. Uh, we ended up with these uh, candles over here. You can see in the original video, it's actually like a lampshade. Um, you know, we could go through, lasso that out and erase that on uh, track two. 
And of course, and this is going to be awful, but um, you can, of course, go through and, you know, paint on your image. Uh, again, this is going to be terrible, but just kind of showcasing, um, you know, we'll hit play, let that render out. Uh, and yeah, I mean, like you can create some like kind of cool effects like that. Point being is that this is kind of acting a little bit like a AI After Effects. Um, yeah, this is pretty amazing. Now, I will say, as always, is it perfect? No, not quite. But, you know, given the fact that you, we have keyframe control and like, a, you know, a bevy of other options, I think that if you're creative with some, you know, with some know-how and a little bit of elbow grease, you'll be able to pull off some pretty impressive stuff. And again, kind of awesome on EBSynth's part. Uh, yeah, it is totally free. Actually, I got started on my project without even logging in. Um, yeah, it's so you can only export at 720 uh, if you're on the, the free tier, but all core functions are there. Uh, obviously, if you move up to the uh, $20 a month plan, um, then you can, you know, uh, export out at 4k uh, with PNG sequences. If you don't know what a PNG sequence is, don't even worry about it. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean, that's awesome. Next up, what is 3D conditioned AI video? Uh, well, we're about to find out. But first, a quick word from our friends at Recraft. Relevant to your interest, today's video is brought to us by our friends at Recraft. If you guys have been following the channel for a bit, you'll know that I'm a pretty big fan of Recraft. They are, of course, home to the Red Panda image model, but as we've recently covered, they also have a number of other tools available, including everything from Flux, Google's Imagen or Imagine models, jury's still out on that one, a number of different flavors on the GPT models, Ideogram, and that is confirmed, it is Ideogram, not Ideogram, uh, and a number of others. So one of the things that I think is really great about having all of these models available to us is the amount of like experimentation iteration you can do. Uh, for example, dragging in this character uh, that we have used on the channel in the past, um, you know, we can restylize and remix her using any one of the numerous style presets available to us on Recraft. Uh, we can, of course, always go over to the My Styles tab where I've created and curated a number of different styles as well. Uh, if you wanna see how all of this is done, I'll link to a video that I did on infinite styles uh, down below. Uh, I'm gonna use this future shock one. I've always really liked this one. And indeed, after a moment, we have kind of a new interpretation on the character. Uh, this one is obviously leaning kind of more into the comic book side of things, uh, mostly again, because that's the style that I, I kind of put together. I think what's kind of cool about working within Recraft is it really does encourage you to sort of play around with different styles and in particular things that you would not have thought of, like this claymation one here. Uh, like there's no way that I would have ever thought to prompt for claymation yet um, there it was. So I was like, yeah, I'll give it a run. That looks pretty cool. And I should note that when it comes to continuing to explore on Recraft, you obviously are not you know, simply limited to the Red Panda or Recraft models. Um, say if we wanted to modify this out, all we have to do is come up here, uh, come into the all models, uh, roll over to external and using flux context, let's take her out to a 16 by nine image, uh, put her on a rooftop. Yeah, um, flux context, man. I know that like Nano Banana has stolen all the thunder. Flux context is still a good model. And again, what I think is great about Recraft is, you know, say we wanted to remove her sunglasses around, you know, we can always just switch the model over to Nano Banana, uh, simply prompt, remove the sunglasses, and, and there we go, the banana doing the banana thing. As I always say, like the right tools for the job. And that's what, again, is great about Recraft is it, it essentially is a big toolbox. If you want to try Recraft out, well, you can for free. Yeah, they offer a pretty solid free tier of 30 credits per day. Uh, if you like it enough, it's a small jump up to the pro plan at only $10 a month. So actually, you know, Pretty reasonable. As always, I do highly recommend to at least sign up for the free tier on Recraft. Uh, it's a great tool to have in your back pocket in case you need it. As always, my thanks to Recraft for sponsoring today's video. Moving on, Kinetics, who I've actually been following for quite some time now. Um, yeah, they are about to release uh, 3D conditioned AI video. Um, what does that mean? Well, we can take, you know, a video like this, uh, you know, woman dancing, um, end up swapping out the background, obviously, and having 3D control of that video in a generated environment. It's, it's showcased pretty well here. So that is an image um, driving video for the reference uh, and then camera motion and then plugging all three of those together. Uh, you get something like this with new assets, essentially those soldiers walking in. Yeah, that's crazy, right? So they're basically billing themselves as the first AI video model that is built for spatial understanding. Um, you know, obviously, again, upload an acting video, 
turn yourself, uh, in this case, into the Hulk. So I just got access to this. So I'm actually not gonna go very deep into this. I need to actually generate some stuff up and you know, kind of play around with the model a little bit. Uh, but I, one thing I did want to sort of point out is that uh, the camera trajectory control, it's not so like 3D blendery, uh, 3D Studio Max, uh, but is rather kind of built into presets. Uh, and then you're able to actually upload videos, uh, full body videos to drive your animations of your characters as well. Uh, or they actually provide you with a number of templates here as well. Again, that's just how the UI is looking today. So this is like still in the alpha stage, although there is a wait list that you can sign up for. Uh, they are, I think, probably moving out of alpha and into beta pretty soon. So uh, if you're interested, definitely, you know, sign up on that beta list. Uh, in the meantime, I did just want to quickly showcase a piece by Amoeba that is using kinetics, uh, not not wholly. I mean, this isn't like out of the box Amoeba. There's obviously a lot more going on here. Um, but as part of the workflow, um, Amoeba was utilized uh, for this. And I mean, this is so cool. It looks, it, this is amazing. Uh, I will definitely have a link to um, the Amoeba portfolio uh, down in uh, the description. Uh, you should definitely give it a watch. It's, it's really pretty captivating and pretty awesome. So I guess that's it for me today. I do want to still round up uh, the Sea Dream tips and tricks thing. Um, I'll try to get to that at some point or another. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.